Crunchyroll, Studio Nano, Octatron 5000, and Sound Cadence Studios. Some of his roles include Perro Sparrow and Napoleon in One Piece, Jingo Raichi in Blue Lock, Red in Banished from the Heroes Party with Justic, and Kotaro Shimaru in My Hero Academia, and Madoka in Chainsaw Man. In addition to acting full-time, Aaron is an assistant director at Crunchyroll and has worked on shows such as Mob Psycho Season 3, Pop Team Epic, Spy Family, Overlord, Shoot Gold to the Future, and Sing Yesterday for Me. So I welcome to you all, Aaron Campbell. Hi, everybody! Hello, everyone. How are we? Good, yes. Hi, my name is Aaron Campbell. Uh, I am a voice actor. I have some really fun panels this weekend uh, talking about like crunchy roll behind the scenes. You know, I'm an assistant director there, so talking a little bit of it without giving too much away about uh, how it works, uh, how to get into voice acting. Uh, and I have a Q&A later this weekend, which is just like anything you want. Like, do I like dogs? What's my favorite food? Uh, yeah, so whatever. I'm, all these kinds of things. I'm excited to be here. Thank you all so much for having me. Uh, yeah, let's have a great weekend. And the answer is yes, he does like dogs and he does like food. Corgis, particularly. Explicitly corgis with their cute little puppy butts. Alright, our next voice acting guest. So from voicing Shirshe and Sully, from Fire Emblem Awakening, to Junko and Oshima and Tokuhukua from Danganron, I'm gonna get this wrong, Danganronpa video games. Danganronpa. Just come on up. <laughs> That's one word I can't get out of my mouth. <laughs> so we have Don Don World Cup video game series. So Amanda here is my best friend. Yeah. We should have backstage. We did. <laughs> We're tight. So she's known for playing spunky, badass. <clears throat> Am I allowed to say that? It's one time. We're PG-13 here. And occasionally deranged heroines and villains in anime and video games. You currently can hear her as Sailor Jupiter in the vis dub of Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal, and as Boruto Uzumaki in Boruto, Naruto Next Generation, airing on Toonami. She also plays the character of Jade and is the creator, writer, and producer of the paranormal comedy mockumentary series, Ghosts and Stuff Inc. on YouTube. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, so I actually went to uh, theater school in, at University of Maryland in College Park, so it's nice to be back in the DMV. Uh, I was telling people on uh, social media, my boyfriend is from Delaware, he thought the DMV included Delaware. I had to crush his dreams and be like, nobody cares about you or Delaware. Nobody thinks about Delaware, it's DC. Anyway, I'm not that mean, I'm just messing around. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm excited to meet you all this weekend. I know I have a panel tonight, I think at 7.30 about like acting on screen, off screen, all that stuff. I have a panel, I think tomorrow around 11, 11.30, that's just a me kind of thing. So come ask me anything, and I mean anything. Um, that sounded very suggestive, never mind. <laughs> I just mean it doesn't have to be voiceover. Uh, it could be like weird stuff. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think, look, in the, look in the show guide. Your handy dandy show guide, because I don't have a good memory. But I'm really excited to be here, and uh, yeah, have a good con. Our next guest, Amelia Gotham, began her acting career at the age of 16 and rose to the ranks and became the youngest director at the Brewery Art Center in Carson City, Nevada. She received further training at the Pacific Conservatory of Performing Arts and after graduation, continued her stage acting with Zombie Joe's Underground Theater and The Visceral Company. Alongside stage work, she ventured into voice acting, earning credits in popular video games, such as the Zelda series, Steel Battalion, and Final Fantasy. Amelia has also contributed to French film dubbing and narrated novels, showcasing her versatility among different artistic mediums. So everybody, welcome Amelia Gotham. Hi everybody, so wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for coming. I'm, I'm super 
super excited to be here today, uh, this weekend. Uh, my panels are going to be, in case you want to come, she's prepared. I am prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be doing uh, on and off screen acting tonight at 7.30. And then tomorrow I will have my own personal uh, Q&A. If you guys have any questions about Zelda or acting or anything of the like, come and ask some questions. And uh, Voices of Zelda is going to be tomorrow at 2.30 to 3.30. So the whole cast will be there. Well, some of the cast will be there. So you guys feel free to bring your questions. And then if you have anything that you want me to sign, uh, 8.30 I'll be signing autographs tomorrow evening. Okay? Thank you so much, you guys. I also love that Zeppelin shirt. Ashuru, aka the Stone of the Builder Refused, is a Peabody award-winning writer, veteran educator, U.S. State Department global hip-hop cultural ambassador, and social entrepreneur hailing from Washington, D.C. He has a hip-hop music career spanning over two decades as an independent international hip-hop artist, releasing albums as a member of Unspoken Heard, and several subsequent solo projects. So spreading his passion for culture on his travels to over 25 countries and counting. That's a lot. Asher is also well known for the voice and pen behind the theme song of the hit TV show, The Boondocks, for which he also contributed several songs and writing the show's first season. I don't believe Asher is backstage. All right, Asher is no go. So next on our list, we have Blake G. So Blake G has freestyled for thousands of people online and in venues around the world. He broke into the scene with his live streams where he would shout out users and rap their comments. So no matter how bizarre that was, he would just rap them out. He further developed this idea into a series of video content for Twitter called Reply Rap where he compiles tweets for his followers into rap verse. His witty bars, charisma, and technical flows carry over to his music, which he creates with a close-knit group of producers and artists under his own label, ODT Life. So ODT Life, or Off the Dome Life, pays homage to his freestyle roots and is a valuable platform for artists in his home of Northern Virginia. I don't believe it's Blake Baxby. No, I don't think like we have today. So next, we have one of our cosplay guests, Chaos Claire. So Jolene, also known as Chaos Claire, is a longtime anime fan and video game lover, and is an avid cosplayer in the convention circuit for 17 years. So she met her husband while attending a convention together, and they decided to start cosplaying as character characters that they love from various anime, video games, comics, and movies. Some of their award-winning cosplays are Astrid and Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon, Ochako and Deku from My Hero Academia, Hino and Varia Hunter from Monster Hunter, along with a plethora of other characters they've done. I only have half of them today, so we have Jolie. Hello. Costume, and hopefully it looks fine. 
I really like cats, so you should all show me pictures of your cats. Um, I'm giving a piano recital at 3.30 here where um, we'll play a bunch of video game music and stuff. Um, and other than that, most of the weekend I'll just be in the dealer's area. I think we have like tables there, so you can come say hi and show me pictures of your cats. Um, and I have a signing tomorrow at 2.30 as well, um, in addition to just being at my table and signing there. And yeah, I don't really know what to say, but hi! <laughs> Bye! Alright, note to self, shorten Emmy's bio to, I want pictures of your cats. Alright, our next guest is actually over in the booth, so can't come on stage in full rock. Thorock is a combined duo of DJ, producer, and illustrator, Arab Arts, and microphone master, Full Control. As fans of sci-fi, comics, and gaming, Asian pop entertainment, nerdcore, as well as a deep love of hip-hop music and culture, the duo brings these together on stage with a show that has been described as clever, energetic, and true to the roots of hip-hop. This is especially expressed in their first single, Ronin Sunset, featuring the Japanese singer Sierra Kyoko, where Full Rock finds themselves fighting a battle to maintain creativity against the current trends of carbon copy style music. So welcome, Full Rock. Give them a hand back there in the back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm behind you. Yes. They're yeah, actually one. behind you. I am the voice of God. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Uh, yes, uh, I am one half of the group Full Rock. My name is actually A Rock Arts, or formerly known as DJ A Rock. The other half is uh, Full Control. We have a huge concert tomorrow, uh, including substantial uh, Sierra, which you all will meet in a little bit, uh, Blake G. And of course, Shingo 2, who you all know, did the theme song for Samurai Champloo. We're all going to be here. Asher Rue did the theme song for the Boondocks and everything like that. Uh, we thank Enemy USA for having us here today, cause, um, this year actually, because this is the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And if you're as old as me, you realize that Enemy has actually been in America too. So we're kind of like meshing both worlds together. So the concert's going to be hot. We're doing that tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. And then we're going to do a, an amazing meet and greet on Sunday. And also, if you want more information about the anime, hip-hop crossovers, because they literally do mesh a lot, we, on Substantial and Shingle 2, will be having a panel tomorrow. I forgot what time it is, but I'll be there. Uh, so check your schedule, and thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. Our next guest, J.B. Mortarello, spent his college internships at the Oprah Winfrey Show in Harpo Productions, where he booked audience members and guests for the show. James is a member of the Directors Guild of America, and has directed numerous live-action commercials for high-profile companies. James has cast, directed, motion capture, and voice over for franchises such as Halo, Orin 5, Hitman Absolution, and Hitman 2016, Final Fantasy 13.3, 14, Mobius, and King's Glaive, along with his latest game, Horizon Zero the Dawn, and The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. He also has game writing credits for the Hitman franchise, Let It Die, and two more soon-to-be-released titles. So welcome all, Jamie! Oh, so nice to see everybody, and uh, uh, it's great to be in Crystal City. I first called it Crystal Light City, and I know it's Crystal City. Um, so yeah, uh, it was a great flight in, um, came from Vegas, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and we're so, everybody is looking so forward to uh, this con. We've um, been preparing for it for many, many uh, months, and really, really excited. Thank you all for coming. Um, I've got a couple panels. I think we're doing the 5 o'clock, there's a meet and greet, right? Yeah, and then there's one, I think somebody mentioned.
mentioned, um, we are at the time for, we're doing another one, so you want to be a voice actor panel, and then I'm doing one on, uh, uh, I think, uh, Sunday, uh, which is uh, about voice directing, because normally I'm a voice director, that's what I usually do 90% of the time, but of course I'm the voice of Prince Side. I was so grateful that Nintendo let me do that. Um, but this is going to be fun, please come by and say hello, uh, and looking forward to the rest of the con, so thank you everybody. Our next guest is Joe Hernandez, who is a Southern California native, earning his Bachelor's of Theater on Arts from California State University in Fullerton. Since 2015, Joe has been a freelance voice actor with credits in video games such as The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, Kingdom Hearts, Three, The Last of Us, Part Two. Joe can be heard in the most recently as Volshon in Fire Emblem Engage, and also has reprised his role as Yunobo in The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. Anime credits include JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind, Kengen Ashura, and Vinland Saga. In addition to his work as a voice actor. Joe is a digital puppeteer at Disneyland Resort in Anaheim and does such interactive shows such as Turtle Talk with Crush and Stitches of Picture Film. So if you've not been to Disney, they are really, really, really great. And so I would like to bring on the stage Joe, if we have Joe backstage. Hello! so far. Really excited to be here. Um, I've had a chance to kind of check out the area in the city in, in D.C. and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. So I'm, I'm really falling in love with this area. Uh, looking forward to, you know, hanging out, uh, you know, taking some selfies, signing some autographs. Uh, and uh, we've got some panels lined up tonight. We've got like some Zelda-centric panels like uh, tonight, tomorrow, and then I've got a Q&A on Sunday. So I'm happy to talk about anything and everything. Um, I also teach voiceover too, so if you guys have questions as far as like the business and how to break in, I am more than happy to like be a resource for you guys, but uh, that's about it. Thank yeah. you for the info. Thank you guys. So go ahead and check out this panel if you want to get into So we have a, another duo coming up. So I will, I'll read their bios individually and bring them both up at the same time. So first we have Liz Claypool, who's the owner and operator of Magnitude 8 Post from 1989 to 2016. In January 1992, he was approached by the US Renditions and LA Hero to provide audio services for their new joint venture in dubbing anime into English. Early Garage Studio Days projects included episodes of Orgus, Weaver, Macross 2, Ambassador Magma, and Giant Robo. Quickly outgrowing the garage, Lace facility eventually grew into encompass multiple rooms and two locations. Some anime and game credits include Ace Combat, Akira, 2001 version, Appleseed, Big O, Castlevania, Code Geass, Cowboy Viva, 5.1 remixes, Devil May Cry, Dot Hack, Ghost in the Shell, Trigon, and Wolf's Ring. And we have Mary Maple, who's a veteran ADR script and publication writer who began her anime writing career in 1994 under the banner of LA Hero. Her first English script adaption was in episode 3 of Giant Robo. From there, Mary went to include hundreds of dozen scripts for anime features and games, including Armitage 3, Big O, Bushido Blade, Code Kiosk, Cowboy Bebop, Devil May Cry, Don Hack, El Hazard, Ghost in the Shell, Kekaishi, Legend of Black Heaven, and more. Mary has also written the English dubbing scripts for foreign and live action projects released by various companies, including Disney and Netflix. So I bring on stage, we have the Claypool. <laughs> Howdy, howdy. Glad to be here. Hearing her read all that 
that stuff. Mr. Springs retired. <laughs> we are so excited to be here and um, really, really are just thrilled. We hope you'll come to our panels and it really thrills us that we put the old and old school and that it still reaches out to youngsters like you, many of whom, probably all of you, who weren't even born when we did most of these <laughs> projects. So we hope you enjoy our panels and uh, thank I gotta, you. I gotta plug stuff. So, since we put the old in old school, we have a badge ribbon that says exactly that. We, uh, we give out all these badge ribbons for free in our autograph session. I think we're doing one tomorrow at four. Um, Mary wrote Ghost in the Shell, Standing on Complex, all of that. We have our original uh, Ghost in the Shell panel. It's a two-hour panel about the dubbing of the original movie and all the insanity that nobody knows about until we put on that PowerPoint and show you how crazy it was. So hopefully we'll see some of you in our panels. I have a historical panel uh, tomorrow at one about what led up to forming the studio where we eventually worked on over a thousand. <laughs> I'm not going to get emotional about this. <laughs> over a thousand episodes, movies, games, trailers, all of that before we closed the, the studios. And then uh, Sunday we have our dubbing panel that goes into the dubs, the behind the scenes of all those dubs that, that we did. So hopefully we'll see some of you at some of these panels and, and totally happy to be here. Thank you guys. Thank you. Gray and Wu Lei. 
So Perfect Trio Project is an eight-time major award-winning cosplay group known for their dedication to anime and dance. They've been cosplaying and dancing together since 2016 and have honed their skills through passion and sheer love doing it. Among their most popular and recognizable cosplays are Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Zenitsu from Kimatsu no Yaiba, or Demon the Slayer, Death of the Kid, Liz and Patty from Soul Eater, Guilty Kiss from Love Thy, Sunshine, Boy, Your, and Anya from Spy Family, and many more. So they are one of our featured and performers yeah. for ASI 2013. Sorry, 2023. I know what year it is. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> All right, we have another guest who is not here with us um, yet. She has a panel, unfortunately, so couldn't make it here. So we have Sarah Hodge Weatherby. So Sarah's dad took her to her first Star Trek, yes, Star Trek convention as a child, sealing her future as a card-carrying geek, a librarian. The Springfield City Library, she tours around New England lecturing on various aspects of geek culture. She's performed for all sorts of venues, from the Norman Rockwell Museum to Massachusetts Library Association, and the Dover Demon as her favorite cryptid. Our next guest is Sean Chaplock. So Sean is a professional voiceover artist voicing in projects from video games, anime, to name brand commercials, and even products from Disney, Pixar, and Nintendo. Some of his recent roles include Rivali, Teba, and the Great Deku, from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Reem Schwarzer in Legend of the Heroes, Trials of Cold Steel series of games, Navara from Shin Megami Tensei IV, Apocalypse, Fade and Dale in Freedom Planet 2, and Rash, the Battle Toad in Killer Instinct. So I'd welcome you all to Sean if we have Sean backstage. Oh, hey, hey. What's going on? Man, small crowd for the comedy hour tonight. How are we doing? You guys having fun? No, you're not. Don't lie to me. Do you like surprises? We're almost done, so if you'll check under your seats for me real quick, you might have a surprise waiting for you. No? No one's gonna check? Darn, I thought that was gonna work. Was One gonna... person did. They did? Okay, well thank you for getting your exercise in. Since you did it, I'll give you a discount when you come to the table, because you actually went through it. I appreciate it. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's, I'm, I'm, I treat these conventions like they're isekai trips of my own, because I'm in a different world for a while. I close my eyes on the plane, I wake up, and all of a sudden the food tastes better. It's fantastic. It's incredible. Um, but I also have a panel that I'm hosting. I'm going to be on a couple panels for The Legend of Zelda, which is going to be a treat, because we have cast members that almost never get the chance to come to conventions, and it's always cool to get to talk about behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, but on Sunday, if you guys are fans of video games, I have a panel called A Gamer's Guide to Dungeon Crawlers, which is a genre that I can info dump for hours and hours about. But I also don't like giving boring presentations, so it's going to have music, it's going to have potentially prizes for those of you who make it the whole two hours. It's a very interesting panel. Um, but other than that, I hope to see you this weekend. Come by the table, come say hi. Smell my wife's candles, purchase them. They're only $15 each. And just share with me your passions and I'll share with you mine. But I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. And be sure to check under the seats for all the O2. This is a Japanese-born multilingual MC, artist, and activist that gained worldwide fame as a lyricist of a theme song battle cry for the groundbreaking anime series Samurai Shampoo, which sparked crossover cultural movement audiences between hip-hop, anime, b-boy, and jazz. Shin O2 has and continues to perform at many anime and pop culture events worldwide, starting with his first appearance. 2009's Akiba Fest, the University of Maryland, and became the first rapper to perform at the Sakura Festival in Washington, D.C. I don't believe we have 
Shing O2 backstage with us. No. All right. So our next guest, our musical guest, is Sierra Kyoko, who was born and raised in Tokyo, Japan. She released her first analog record, Boogie Oogie Oogie, in 2005, which was produced by Volta Masters, a leading hip-hop track producer. By 2011, she has released two more albums, Heavenly You and Timeless. While being actively engaged in her own solo live activities, Sierra has also participated in numerous recordings and collaborations with various DJs, such as lending her powers to the voice of Bull Rock, their debut single Ronin Sunset, where her authenticity, passionate energy, and encouragement can be felt throughout the beat driven Bushido theme track. Sierra's albums present her engaging and alternative singing voice, which may consider reminiscent of 70s, 80s, and 90s pop and R&B singers. So I'd like to welcome you all, Sierra Kyoko. Hi, everyone. Konnichiwa. I'm a singer from Japan, and I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, I think there's the performance tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, so our next couple of guests are unfortunately not here, but I will again give you their intro. So we have Snake Eyes. So King on Heart, better known by his artistic stage name, Snake Eyes, is an American rapper from Newark, New Jersey. Snake originally was a member of TriStorm Entertainment and is best known for his association with First Family, or Michelle Posse, and has been featured in many artists' albums and mixtapes. Snake built his online fan base using social media networks like Instagram, Twitter, MySpace, Facebook, and ThatPip.com. During his career, Snake's music has been featured on various mixtapes, and compilation CDs, along with icons such as Mary J. Blige, Alicia Keys, Fabulous, Kanye West, Twista, Tech Nine N Nine Nine, Mac Miller, Meek Mills, Jada Kiss, Young Black, and more. Our next musical guest is Substantial. So they're an international hip hop recording artist. Substantial is a jazz, rap, lo-fi hip-hop veteran, known for his collaborations with the late New Jack, Odessa, and others. Hip-hop legend Chuck D of Public Enemy referred to Substantial as one of the great MCs of our time. And their music has reached over 50 million plays on Spotify, and has reached number six on the billboard of world digital sales charts, while um, videos have been featured on MTV. BET and VH1. So two-time Hollywood Music and Media Award nominee, Substantial has performed in nearly 20 countries worldwide. So our next group of guests, who unfortunately are not backstage as well with us, are the Panel Geeks. So they consist of two Philadelphia area sisters, the co-founders of Nichi Khan, and the dynamic duo loves all things geeky. And they have decided to take their talents to hosting panels on the road to major anime conventions along the East Coast. Panel Geeks focuses on adding diversity programming to any geeky event that they love, whether it's to discuss serious issues or just geeking out and fan favorite series. So whether you want panels about characters, uh, creators of color, discussions about LGBTQ plus representation, or just simply need an in-depth Inuyasha fan panel, they're your panel geeks. And then our last guest on the list is Wolf UBD, who's an artist, producer, clothing designer, and the CEO founder of Konjutsu and U Billion Degrees. He expresses his love for anime, gaming, and real-life situations in his music in a catchy way that will captivate his listeners. At 11, he started producing beats and writing songs. 
In 2017, he dropped his single, Back At It. This song represents him snapping out of depression and getting back into everything that he loved. Two years later, he dropped his single, Hammers and Nails, which featured Vase Hayes. And in 2020, dropped his four-track, Vigo EP. And he also released an album in 2021, so you can see them at the Full Rock Hip Hop to Anime 50 Years concert. So that concludes our guests, but I would like to go over some main events over the weekend. So today, um, Emmy alluded to this earlier, that Emmy has a piano concert in this room at 3.30, so if you would like to come listen to video game music on piano, come to that. Prom is at 5 o'clock. And then we have burlesque seating, which starts at 8, and then a rave starts at 11. Tomorrow's events, we have the Idol USA at 1.30. Masquerade is at 6, seating begins at 5.30. Our concert is at 9.30, and then the rave is at 11. And then Sunday, we have the J Fashion Show that starts at 10, seating begins at 9.30, and then we have the Hip Hop Artist Q&A at 12.30. So thank you everyone for coming here to come visit our guests, learn a little bit about them, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much.